Hey guys, it's Sean. I'm with my buddy Josh, and we have a special surprise for you. We have a king cobra. This is a very, very large venomous snake from Indonesia. He's actually 14 feet long and close to about 25 pounds. Now, he is a venomous snake, so we're taking some precautions. We have our snake uh, hook with us. Josh has him handled by the tail, which is okay to do with cobras, but not typically something you do with other venomous snakes. And we have a couple people in the room with us who are also very knowledgeable snakes and have had many years' experience dealing with venomous snakes. Josh and I both have a lot of experience with venomous snakes as well. He has more than I do, which is why he's the primary handler right now. Now, a couple things to know about these guys. Being a king snake, that means he does eat other snakes. So he's actually immune to snake venom of snakes within his region, not things with outside of it. And one of the cooler things about him is you notice that the scales on his head are actually much larger than the scales on the rest of his body, and that's because they're kind of plated. They're very, very hard. He can use that to deflect the fangs of another king snake coming after him and stop them from penetrating and possibly hurting him. Now, he can eat very large food items because of how long he is and because of how big or round he is. He can be pretty intimidating, but cobras are actually very intelligent snakes. They learn to scope out their environments. They kind of test some boundaries, see what they can get away with, but they're always thinking and measuring things out. Josh is keeping a very, very close eye on him because he knows the snake's movement very well. He's spent many hours with them. He's had the snake for years, and so he knows what to look for. And when you have an intelligent animal on top of one that's also dangerous, those are the things you want to look out for. You want to be able to know that animal's body movement and things that might possibly put you or the animal in danger. Now, on that one, I'm going to hand it over to Josh because he actually has a lot more knowledge about this snake than I do. Yeah, so this is Jazz. He's our biggest king cobra here. Um, he's, like Sean said, he's right around 14 feet, which is pretty much the maximum size for a king cobra. Um, there are accounts of them getting bigger, even up to 18 feet. However, 14 to 15 is the pretty typical size for a large adult male. Um, I'm unsure how old Jazz is. I got him as an adult, so there's really no way to know. Um, but he definitely still has lots of life left. And like Sean said, these are very intelligent animals. Um, and one kind of funny fact about them is that they're actually not cobras. They're not in the same genus as cobras. They're not a true cobra. They are their own genus. They're just called the king cobras. Um, and like Sean said, they are snake eaters only in the wild. Um, in captivity, they can be trained to eat rodents and chicks and things like that uh, via scenting, where we'll take a snake's scent and rub it on a different type of prey item, and they can eat that. However, uh, all snake diet is what they eat in the wild, so that's what we recreate here for them. Jazz will eat pretty much any species of snake, but a lot of them will actually refuse certain species that aren't from their native range. Now you notice that there's been a couple times a video where he hooded up. That means he can flex the, the muscles and the bones of his neck to make his neck appear larger. That is a way of deterring other animals away from him. But also a really interesting thing that I learned last time I was here is that helps him with balance, isn't that right? Yeah, so a lot of times you'll notice that he doesn't really hood and stand up at the same time. He'll actually just kind of like flare his hood a little bit. Um, and that can be a sign of curiosity or an alertness, like, hey, what's going on over there? Um, and then on top of that, I've also seen them, and, you know, not really with Jazz, because obviously when I'm handling him, he's on the ground, but with some of the smaller kings that I'll actually hook and tail off the ground, um, they'll use that hood as kind of a balancing method. They'll, their body will hang off the hook a little bit, and their hood will just fan out just about halfway. And uh, it's just to keep their balance. So they do a lot of communicating through their body language, and, you know, like Sean said, Knowing your animals and you know having the experience with this species uh, definitely will lead you on to know what the snake is thinking. Now, aside from the size of this snake and the fact that it is a venomous snake, every once in a while they will uh, they will hiss, and their hiss is very very loud. In fact, it's very intimidating. You can actually kind of feel the hiss come at you. Now he's pretty calm right now, so he's not really finding the need to do that. And that's actually a good sign, right? Like, we don't want him to be doing something like that. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to any snake or any animal for that, you know, that matter, especially with a venomous animal, though, we don't want them to be all wound up and stressed out. There's no reason to have them hooding up with their mouth open and trying to bite or anything like that. This is what we want. This snake is totally calm. He's just checking out the room. You know, he's watching a few people in the background. Um, he's not stressed out at all. He's just checking it all out. Um, and this is what we want. There's no reason to have them all worked up and, you know, trying to bite or anything like that. We, we really want to keep these animals calm and happy and you know do the best we can for them in captivity. And then this is something that I'll stress in any of my videos too is 
just because an animal can be dangerous or can hood up and do stuff that we would find cool in other videos, this isn't something that we do here. We keep things relaxed, we keep them calm, and we try to provide the best environment possible for this animal. So, on that note, I want to thank Josh for getting this awesome snake out and showing them to us, and you guys for watching this, and we will see you next time.